Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Circle podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Armstrong, and with me today is Rob Sesternino. How are you doing, Rob? Taryn, if you are trying to elicit a erotic emoji from me in this conversation, you will be sorely mistaken. Uh, well, I, I said to all of the uh, podcasters, whichever one of you arouses me the most, <laughs> you will get to be. <laughs> no, I you get no dirty emoji. I just this just this one purple guy. That's it. <laughs> just the purple guy. <laughs> just the purple no guy. No peaches. Yes. Yes. Okay. We are here to talk about episode six of the Circle U.S. here on Netflix, and uh, still, still going strong here. I still have been loving every episode. This has been great. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, this has been a, a fun couple of weeks here. Uh, we're ha- this is the halfway mark. We got uh, halfway through. Yeah. Six down, six to go. <laughs> That's true. Uh, so we uh, we left off with uh with some rising tension they were they were playing the hashtag game and uh everybody was coming for mercedes um i do want to uh get a a quick take here on this from you that it seems like somewhere along the line mercedes just really lost lost hold of what she was doing here because it seems like all of a sudden everybody is, is wise to the fact that she is a catfish here yeah I guess, you know, um, when we talked about Antonio getting out in the fourth episode, I think that we were trying to figure out when we did the roundtable with Tim on Wednesday night about which was the conversation that went awry worse. Was it the one that she had with with Chris or was it the one that she had with Sammy and I, I, it seemed like that she never really lost Chris, but it seemed like that the way that she tried to handle that Antonio came to visit, Antonio announced that there was a catfish in in his goodbye message. And I think that they were able to deduce that it was probably going to end up being Mercedes. And it just seemed like that between uh, the conversations that we saw and probably conversations that we didn't see that the jig was up for Mercedes. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, I I agree. I think that uh, I think Tim was right when uh, he said he felt like the Sammy conversation was the worst one. It seems like Sammy is very confident that Antonio visited uh, Mercedes and it does seem like that whole thing really, really caught up to uh, to Mercedes. And I, I still find it strange that they allowed Antonio to even say anything uh, in his goodbye message like that. Yeah. I think that, you know, Karen slash Mercedes got kind of hosed uh, by that, but she also did a, a really bad job of diffusing the situation. She called up um, Sammy and was like, she wasted mm-hmm. the good lashes. She was very, she was very upset and she was, you know, really feigning that she was uh, pissed off about the whole thing. Uh, she didn't get a visit. And uh, I think hindsight being 2020 and the year being 2020, uh, I think that was the wrong way to go. Yeah. Also, because I just feel like if if you get that message, the first thought on everyone's mind is, who did he go see? Mm -hmm. And so when you open the conversation with, oh, I'm so mad he didn't see me. Mm -hmm. It's like you're trying that's you're trying to deflect. The question should be, who do you think he saw? Like, because mm-hmm. it wasn't me, it, mm-hmm. but like, we need to figure it out because it wasn't me. Not like, oh man, I really wanted to see my Antonio got my lashes mm-hmm. ready. Yeah. She talked about how she used to talk to Antonio every single night and then he did her dirty. So uh, it wasn't a convincing cover story. I, I think that for, for Karen and Mercedes, who I thought had good, some good moments, uh, uh, you know, in the first five episodes with making relationships, certainly uh, she was able to bond with Chris that she uh, just really misplayed the uh, Antonio exit. Yeah. Uh, I agree on that one. Um, So Mercedes is getting called out in the hashtag game. Mm -hmm. uh, Hashtag. I didn't know there was a catfish filter Mm -hmm. Um, and Mercedes decides to call everyone else out. All right. You want to you want to be this way? Let's let's match each person. Does anyone want to own up to the hashtag that they put down? And Joey says, all right, I'll step up. I got this one. Yeah, yeah that 
he he had to own it that his that he did uh hashtag the faker the juice <laughs> i'm yeah. just too real i'm too real <laughs> i can't message i'm too real <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's uh, he, he's going to own up to it. Nobody else is. And uh, the, you know, Chris respects him for stepping up yeah. uh, like that. But uh, but he does not win respect from Mercedes. He's like, I'm getting you out of here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Joey and Mercedes never clicked uh, for whatever reason that, you know, uh, it seemed like that we saw Joey flirt with every other person in the game and have a relationship. I don't know if we ever had one private message between joey and mercedes yeah that's i talked to amon about that in in uh the previous podcast where uh she rated him last because she was like he didn't talk to me mm -hmm. uh they just never seemed to interact um i imagine this came from the antonio beef right he was never big on antonio mm -hmm. antonio's number one was mercedes and so it probably translated in that way that they just never communicated yeah, um, that Joey has uh, had a rapport with everybody pretty much. Uh, yeah, but Mercedes is probably the one person that uh, he never clicked with. Yes. Uh, Rebecca does want to go in and reassure Mercedes after the game, though, uh, that uh, this is something that we talked about a little bit in the previous podcast that usually, like, when this happens, uh, like, everybody calls somebody out. It's actually usually a good thing for that person because now it's mm -hmm. all out in the open. Now it can be addressed. Uh, yeah. Something can happen with it. And uh, sometimes what happens is that people feel bad for the person that everyone just dumped on. Um, and in this case, uh, that did seem to happen a little bit here with Rebecca, who wants to kind of uh, step in here and, and make a connection. Uh, I think also this is a bit strategic on Rebecca's end, knowing that uh, if Mercedes has nobody, then it's easy for him to step into that role. Yeah. I mean, Taryn, is, is this not unlike uh, Taco Tuesday? Uh, was it <laughs> what, what that who who ended up uh, being the immediate uh, beneficiary of uh, Taco Tuesday? What, Christy and end, ended up uh, getting more out of Taco Tuesday or was it Nick Macaroni origi originally <laughs> because uh, people were uh, people came to him after the fact? Yeah. Well, I mean, Nick, Nick was the person that people felt bad for the most because uh, like his stuff got blown up. Um, ultimately, Christy benefited from it. Mm -hmm. And Nick did not. Um, but in the immediate aftermath, it was most people were going to Nick and comforting him in bed while uh, while Christy was like, uh, what? what did I do? Yeah. And he'd be a good circle person. <laughs> Flirt with everybody. Right? <laughs> this is calling. Everybody on the circle is Nick in Big Brother. Like everybody is doing <laughs> including pretending you don't have a girlfriend right right he, he's the master he's the master yeah but um you know see uh rebecca slash seaburn uh really tries to uh you know comfort uh karen slash mercedes uh and they talk about how uh sometimes uh you have to wear the s on your chest i was losing me a little bit with the uh superman superwoman Superwoman, so yeah, yeah, Superwoman. Uh, but then, then Mercedes, was like, it's not, it's not S for Superwoman. It's S for Savage. Okay, Some Savage. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm what yeah. I'm telling you here is that I'm Savage against everyone, including you, Rebecca. Mm -hmm. Taryn, how do you feel like Rebecca slash Seaburn is doing? Because, you know, in, in these two episodes, uh, I'm really starting to wonder: is the Rebecca character working? Seaburn is is running into the problem that a lot of catfish I've noticed have, which is that there's just not a lot of depth mm -hmm. to Rebecca. Um, that he is trying to portray her in a very like caric caricature esque yeah. way uh, of like the very innocent, sweet sort of. Uh, and I talked about it with a like it's it's almost like a weird sort of idealized maybe version of his girlfriend that's like mm -hmm. never 
had a guy interested in her other than him and like was yeah. like super innocent and sweet and like uh just like has basically no personality i don't know <laughs> i don't know where, where that's i don't know what that uh stems from um but it's hard it's hard to create a personality is the problem i i think like obviously his girlfriend does have a personality so why isn't he just tri- like being that uh maybe this is just genuinely how he sees his girlfriend i don't know what that relationship is like but there's a there's an issue here where uh the most personality that rebecca has is i have a twin and uh oh boy was i falling in love but now i've noticed yeah. that he's a dog <laughs> The Seaburn is really feeling like he, he's nailing it, but I mean, his character is really almost like a, it's almost like a, a, in a movie where uh, a man is like dressed up like a woman and like people are like the like men are like uh, coming up and like hitting on the woman and he's like, uh, like, hey, like, uh, I, I would never, you know, uh, back in my day. A gentleman would have to take a lady to dinner first before he tried something like that. Uh, it's it's a weird character. Yeah, it it it, it feels like like a like just it feels like a poorly written female character, right? Like just yeah, uh, does not pass like the Bechtel test, right? Like what? Like no, uh, no, no, I don't think so. Um, but uh yeah that's uh Rebe- it's just a, you know it was it's weird that Re- rebecca has had a lot of conversations with all the other catfishes also <laughs> yeah it's true um, but the, but this is but he is catfish. he is playing well here uh well enough at least where he has made a connection with sammy sammy really likes rebecca he has the connection with shuby those are two uh popular people as we'll see having both of those people in his uh pocket are that's great for him and his instincts i think are good uh strategically at least um where he immediately got in with shuby because shuby was an outcast at first that investment has paid dividends um and so i think the instinct here with mercedes was also good he sees that mercedes is on the outs and he pounces and he steps in and he says hey i've got your back i think that's a great way to play this game uh because it keeps people on your side and i think the fact that he's also still not being the influencer while still being influential and highly rated is another great thing for him so uh, i think that game wise it's actually working out yeah uh that the rebecca character is non-threatening it it, is it's interesting that you brought up shuby because i do think it works the best with shuby where shuby is like automatically like turned off anytime like the conversation turns to anything that's like flirtatious that he's just like uh like like oh oh so fake oh uh but you know because rebecca doesn't go there that that's why that rebecca has uh, so much clout with him Mm -hmm. Yes, for sure. Uh, So, you know, it's uh, I think it's working out for Rebecca. Rebecca is also going to uh, talk to Adam uh, to do to do a little more uh, flirting there. Um, I'm sure that that you and Amon uh, talked all all about Adam uh, slash (laughs) Alec. Is that his real name? Alex Alex is the real real guy. So bad. (laughs) You you didn't find him charming. The worst catfish ever. (laughs) You didn't think that saying uh, which one of you will arouse me the most? Which one of you will arouse me? I ladies. thought when he talked about it, like, uh, so ladies, tell me about your wildest romp. Um, <laughs> I've been told I'm adventurous in the bedroom. <laughs> yeah. And then here uh, he says, uh, I'm looking for someone with a little more oomph. <laughs> right. So, OK. So, yeah, he talks to Sammy first. Uh, he in- initiates a conversation with Sammy um, yeah. and Sammy's still like uh, uh, he sa- Adam is saying to Sammy, oh, I should have picked you. It's uh, I, yeah. Rebecca's. She's she's great. She's nice. nice. Not not enough enough oomph for me. Not enough oomph. And and Sammy, I still I, I love Sammy's reaction anytime anybody tries to flirt. Oh, God. Yeah. Hey, somehow that. Adam completely missed the mark of like the one the one woman that was in the house that would have possibly like that was interested was Miranda and totally just biffed it did not even have her in consideration. I don't understand. All of the guys seem to be this beautiful woman who is just chomping at the mm-hmm. bit for a guy to be interested in her and they're all missing it. I don't know what's happening here, Ralph. Not Joey. I mean jo- even Joey is like still preoccupied with other women in the like that you have you have miranda she likes yeah. you not by the end of this episode <laughs> he'll get there he'll get there um, so uh so 
Samuel is not really having this. It was, there's some pretty gross flirting going on here. <laughs> Why did Alex think he could pull this off? I mean, I talked I talked to Amon about this a little bit, but I especially got I, I this just really reinforced my view watching this episode that it just it feels to me like Alex is the kind of guy and I'm I'm sorry that this is very judgmental and I'm just mm-hmm. theorizing here but he seems like the kind of guy that has always just kind of been like hot guys always get the women it's so easy for them uh it's not fair and uh and so he feels like being a hot guy it'll be really easy all he has to do is just be hot and confident and uh and I feel like he's kind of just like living out a fantasy of like hey I get to be a hot guy that flirts with hot women sorry wife but I'm enjoying this yeah I I don't know I I disagree that I don't know necessarily if like I think he he obviously felt like that okay a hot guy is gonna help him win but I don't know if he felt like that um because he's so bad at at the flirting of what to say that I can't imagine that he feels like that hey I wish I could be this hot guy so I could talk to these women uh, I I don't I don't know I, I just think that he thought that 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 the women were just going to be um, completely just blown away by this guy. Yeah, that's, and that's what I'm saying. It's a, being hot would, would do 90% of the work. I can't. That's how, that's what, that's so what I read that it's online so all the time. It. It's 90% yeah. being hot. I feel like he's one of those people that writes that message. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he was like, he was like, he couldn't wait to reveal the hot picture that made him sweat uh, mm-hmm. because he was like, they're just gonna be all over this. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just, I, I think he just, he felt like, uh, like it would be easy. That all he needed to do is be attractive. Yeah, uh, it's almost that he's coming off as like a guy who's like looking for like like a date. Like he treats it like the Bachelor. Uh, That's what I'm saying. <laughs> he's i feel like he i feel like uh, I, i'm sure he loves his wife but i think that he's really just enjoying getting to flirt with like attractive women hmm. i think he cares <sighs> more about that than he does the game that's what it seems like no but i feel like if he cared about that he would be better at it he, he's just so <laughs> bad at it like i think yeah i i feel like that he thinks that this is like a means to an end of then then everyone will fall in love with him and then i'll win uh, like i don't I, like i i don't feel like he's getting any pleasure from the flirting with the women because i feel like he would be better at it if he he would take it more seriously he seems to really like uh sammy's photos uh it's uh that he i think that's why he i think that's why he went to sammy like i'm looking for some more oomph because mm-hmm. i think he wanted to flirt with sammy more i think he genuinely felt that way yeah i think maybe he got frustrated by rebecca that rebecca wasn't like re- like sexting back right. uh, i don't know if, yeah but like if that's what i'm saying if it's purely game then he has rebecca exactly where he wants her and he should keep up with that but it, i think he was yeah. disappointed because it didn't feel genuine enough i don't know i don't, I don't know flirting. what adam is doing uh, it's just uh, that's that's just what I get. This is what I get. This is my read on it. Uh, it's weird, just, it's, and, I, and he is very bad at it. Yeah, uh, find the whole thing very unsettling. It it's strange. It's strange. Um, so after after Adam talks, oh, oh you know what? Uh, that it, just in that conversation, just uh, that he is looking for a, a, a woman that can handle all of him. Uh, which is also like grosses out Sammy. And then he's like, and he's constantly like looking at the picture of Gina. And he says that, well, she, she'll forgive me for this because I'm eating vegetables. <laughs> And that's the thing too. Like the fa- it's the fact that he keeps apologizing to his wife that makes me feel like he has a guilty conscience, right? Like you don't you're not apologizing yeah. about something that you feel is is like totally morally correct and that you're wow. deriving no pleasure from. Yeah, well, I think he gets that he's definitely in some gray area in this relationship of, you know, he's doing something weird. Yeah, uh, I, I think I, I compared it with him on to like, it's it's like he's playing like a role playing, like he's he's going online and he's playing like a role playing game and he's getting to play as like a character and he's like, in, not necessarily like taking like sexual pleasure of via flirting but like he's mm-hmm. enjoying getting to play this role where he flirts with women successfully because he's attractive that's that's kind of my 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 guess on it <laughs> so bad so bad 
<laughs> it's interesting though it's so yeah. interesting i love watching these people mm -hmm. um so after Adam talks to Sammy, uh, Rebecca is going to start talking with Adam uh, right after he's done talking about how she's not she doesn't have enough oomph um, that mm -hmm. they start they start flirting pretty, pretty hardcore again. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Re Rebecca continuing with uh, at this point with the like, oh, man, I'm just that was so wonderful. You're just yes. so wonderful. That's Adam. Such a thoughtful gesture to send the teddy bear. I love I love the teddy bear. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, in fairness, I do think that Seaburn really did like it. Uh, That's true. You know, Seaburn was cuddling with it. It was, uh, you know, hit, hit a home run for Seaburn. I mean, that went over a lot better than uh, sending over a sexy negligee. That would have been so much better, though. That would have been so much more fun. <laughs> we talked about, I talked about, he absolutely would have put it on. You think so? Absolutely. Uh, I don't know. I think I he would have been know. like, oh, my God. He I think he would have had fun with it. Don't know if it would fit. Uh, I suspect that him and Rebecca are <laughs> well, not gotta, the same. They gotta though. send him. They gotta send him one that fits, right? I uh, think they're gonna send him like a like Seaburn's a big guy. Uh, yeah, like like it's, it's, Adam doesn't know the size of the thing that he sent. So you think that the circle would send Seaburn like a like a women's I don't know size sixteen uh, sexy negligee that would maybe uh, Seaburn could fit into? They absolutely want the footage of Seaburn being like, "I've got it on right now," and I'd have been like, "Oh, <laughs> yeah." And but it's actually Seaburn with it on. They they okay. want that. Yeah. Maybe Seaburn like would just like not like he'd wear like regular clothes, but just like have it on like like yeah, a bib. Yeah. 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 He'd, he'd, figure it out whatever he's comfortable <laughs> with <laughs> oh! uh, so yes in the middle of the flirtation there's an alert it interrupts the mm -hmm. conversation it's time for the ratings results mm -hmm. and get yeah. right down to it yeah and uh right away not super surprising considering the outcome of the hashtag game mercedes in last place yeah she knew it yeah she knew it was gonna be there and, you know, it had to have been really bad because I think Chris put her number one. Chris, yes. Chris put her <laughs> so at number one. swept the bottom rankings for everybody else. I imagine she was, I imagine she was like number five or six for most people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then in sixth place was mm -hmm. Miranda. Miranda. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's tough to overcome being new. Very tough. Uh, mm -hmm. She came in. She made some uh, funky first impressions. She's new. Uh, usually, those people are pretty low uh, in their first ranking, so not super surprising. Um, and they're definitely in a lot of danger in their first uh, blocking. So uh, Miranda was definitely in trouble here. Then tied for fourth place, Chris and Joey. What a pair! Yeah, <sighs> yeah. Joey's been right around this spot. Every single time, you know, Chris was the influencer last time out. I'm surprised uh, Chris isn't higher in the rankings, but, um, you know, middle of the pack. Uh, you know, this is the Antonio zone. This is where you want to be. Well, I think Shuby sabotaged him, right? Oh. Uh, we sort of we sort of learned that for sure that Shuby... He, he felt like he disagreed a lot with Chris in the last influencer chat. And mm -hmm. I think he already was a little sketched out by Chris. Um, he's definitely threatened by Chris. And so yeah. Shuby put Chris in last place in the rankings. It didn't for... go great when they tried to add Chris to the last guy's chat. Yes. Yeah. Um, and now Joey seems a little bit out on Chris. He put a hashtag uh, like calling out uh, Chris for being fake, uh, mm -hmm. stirring the pot. Whereas before he seemed very high on Chris. And so I did wonder if if shuby maybe got into joey's ear a little bit about that as well and that's probably why uh chris has gone down a bit um and sense. joey seems held back by mercedes and uh and you know maybe i don't know who else mm -hmm. yeah so then top three rebecca sammy and shuby and uh who's who's gonna be an influencer rebecca is third place mm -hmm. not an influencer that means sammy and shuby in second and first place, respectively, are our new influencers. Yep, both two-time influencers now. Uh, Sammy had the week off where she was not the influencer. She was uh, the first week with Antonio, but now here she is uh, back in the uh, uh, catbird position. 
Yes, she's very excited. Shubi was excited, but he was also like, oh, this is going to put a target on my back, uh, mm-hmm. which is definitely the case. Yeah. Uh, Shubi, what a turnaround for Shubi to go from he was almost out the first week and now uh, back to back influencer. Yeah, that's I mean, that's how it works. I mean, I think that uh, especially somebody like Shubi, the image that he gives off, he's non threatening, which mm-hmm. is great because really one of the main reasons people will not like somebody else is if they find them threatening in in some way Mm -hmm. uh so shuby's very good at not appearing to be threatening he's pretty genuine with the people that he interacts with um so he's very easy to like and he's very easy to trust that uh people can trust him to not especially after the first time he was influencer he kept his friends safe so they, if they keep voting him in, then they can have faith that he will continue to keep them safe. So uh, I think there's going to be a lot of volatility in the influencer picks in general. But it wouldn't surprise me if Shuby was some, one of the more stable, uh, high-rated people just because uh, he's trustworthy. He's, he's somebody that they can, they can trust to, to keep them safe. Yeah, and you know he is very open about his friendship with Joey. But if, if this was Big Brother and Joey and Shuby were on the block, like Joey's definitely going home uh, in that scenario. Yeah, I I agree. Um, I, the, although I think that on the circle, if Shuby finds himself vulnerable, uh, I do think there are some people that might start to think, mm, "Is this our opportunity to take him out?" Mm-hmm. Um, and again, it also wouldn't surprise me if they, if people just thought, you know, Shuby's been up there too much. I want to, I want to put him down a little bit. I want a chance up there. So mm-hmm. who knows? I don't think that's the right move though. I think send him up there every time. If he's keeping you safe, uh, then you're kept safe every time and you don't get any target on your back. Yeah. All right. Well, him and Sammy have, uh, some interesting discussion here and I'm curious to know if you think they end up uh, making the right decision, Taryn. Yes. Um, I was, so I, I put down some thoughts before the, I watched the chat and I, cause I was, I was thinking like, there's an interesting scenario here because Shuby's worried about Chris, uh, but they both think Mercedes is fake and Miranda's new and they're both a little bit skeptical of her. So, um, I thought those three are definitely the at-risk people. Rebecca and Joey, I feel, are safe. And I, I felt like it could genuinely be any one of those three, although uh, it was probably more down to Chris and Mercedes. Um, and that is what it ended up being for the most part. Um, uh, but before before we get to that, uh, there the at-risk chat. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Joey is saying, whoever, whoever gets eliminated, please come visit me. I'm lonely here. Yeah. Yeah, uh, he's looking for anybody to come. It, it's weird of, you know, the person that we don't like, uh, like anybody could come here. I'm so, you know, I'm so bored. I think it's a pretty good tactic uh, if you're a catfish to just keep inviting people to come visit you because I feel like uh, the, I feel like people will in general feel like catfishes will not want to be visited. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe that's maybe that's something to think about. Uh, Joey says, oh, that Adam, he's probably naked on the couch, eating pizza, watching. It's like his Super Bowl. Yeah, uh, I loved this bit from the narrator. I was like, please don't be naked. Please don't be naked. Yeah, the narrator really does not seem to love Adam. <laughs> well, is that surprising? Mm. Uh, it's surprising just in that the, I don't think that the narrator has picked on anybody as much as Adam so far. He's easy to pick on. Yeah, yeah he's really done a bad job. The funny thing was, he was eating pizza. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they knew that. They, but he was they, not naked. Well, he did talk about that uh, when he was. Uh, did that happen yet? About the guy, the guys' chat of uh, I mean, the last episode, right? That when they talked about how uh, that he really misses pizza. Um, That's how I think Joey knew to that uh, that Adam's thing was pizza. Yeah, he's got to do a hundred crunches though after he eats the pizza. Oh man, and the the workout uh, chat. <laughs> yeah, that that's still to come. Yeah. Um, all right. So influencer chat. They start on Miranda. Shuby trusts uh, Joey, and Joey likes Miranda, so he feels mm-hmm. a little bit better about Miranda than he did before. He just doesn't like that she's so flirty. He doesn't mm-hmm. like the flirty, it, which is you know, Miranda's like the only person in there that genuinely, other than maybe Joey, that gen- even with Joey though, like I think Miranda 
has honed in. She likes Joey for the most part. She's flirting with Joey. She's not really flirting that much with anyone else anymore. Uh, whereas even Joey, who I think genuinely flirts, flirts with like anything that's remotely attractive. Um, and then everybody else just flirts at everything all the time with no intention, no like no meaning behind it whatsoever. She's actually genuine when she flirts, but she's still, Shuby's not into it. No, Shuby, that's the number one uh, turnoff for Shuby is people flirting with him. <laughs> yeah. He or hates others. That. Or others. Or others. Uh, no, no flirting. But, but Joey, uh, you know, that's just Joey. That's just who he is. Mm hmm uh sammy's still not sure about miranda but she has felt better about her um chris sammy thinks he's hilarious but mm -hmm. shuby shuby's intimidated by chris he's super smart he's mm -hmm. great at relating to people he's a politician he does not state his real opinions and yeah. uh and sammy's like whoa coming on strong here yeah Karen, they're gonna start making the case about how mercedes uh, maybe they should keep mercedes in the game i really did think it was gonna end up being chris who went out on this elimination it definitely seemed that way, um, especially because Shuby did come out, come out really hard for Chris and to say all those things about Chris and then keep him in the game mm -hmm. when he is kind of a dangerous player in the game is pretty risky if you are Shuby. See, it, it does seem like he can trust uh, Sammy. Uh, she doesn't seem to have that strong a connection with Chris. She likes him, but not. they don't seem to talk one-on-one -on -one all that much. Um, but if Sammy were a savvier player, um, she could easily rat uh, uh, Shuby out on this. Yeah, do you feel like that Shuby uh, tipped his hand too much in terms of the way that he views the game? Or do you think that because they ended up voting out Mercedes anyway that it doesn't really matter? I think that he did tip his hand. And if he had been up there with the wrong person, it could have really went poorly for him. Um, Sammy, I think, is not an overtly strategic player. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, it didn't seem to backfire yet. It still could. But I think that if Shuby continues to find himself in the influencer position with other players, uh, then he might need to start being more careful about that sort of thing. I think he's fine with Joey. He's fine with Rebecca seemingly fine with Sammy. Honestly, Sammy's the person, if I'm Shuby, that I that I would be most careful with because even if I have a connection with her, I'm still concerned that, like, it's not a strategic enough connection. You never know how she's going to react to strate strategic things. When she hears... So they talk about Mercedes, and uh, Shuby says, we all think she's a catfish, but that can be a good thing. She can be a shield for mm -hmm. us. We can keep her in and uh, it'll be good. Like, and, and Sammy says, wow, actually under, I, I see that logic. I'm realizing I should be playing more strategic. I wish I could be seeing the game more like that. So her reaction was more like, oh, that's a good thought, Shuby. I should be thinking more along those lines. But it easily could have been, whoa, Shuby, I didn't realize you were this cutthroat. Like, mm -hmm you're threatening to me right now uh so yeah sammy is the person that she is the most unpredictable in her reaction to what whatever different stimuli she comes across where sometimes you know uh, she feels like oh i really you know, oh that's like oh, I, I love that person or then sometimes she gets a message it's like ew gross oh i hate uh i i hate them now yeah <laughs> like with miranda and um you know miranda said like uh like oh like i think you're the catfish because because no, nobody could be that that incredible uh she's like oh what she thinks i'm a catfish I'm like oh i hate her uh so sammy is you know very volatile you gotta be careful you gotta be careful um and it did seem like based on what they had said that they would go with chris i really and and then they mm -hmm. said they're manipulative and quick to point the fig finger and i was like oh well that mm -hmm. sounds more like mercedes but then she kept saying, oh, this is so hard. I can't believe I'm doing this. And mm -hmm. I was like, is it, it's, it's Chris. It has to be Chris. Like the, that's the big, that's the big crazy move is Chris. Mm -hmm. um, but then she wrote out Mercedes. And I was like, whoa, like I got, I was convinced it was going to be Chris. <sighs> yeah. Uh, Mercedes, uh, you know, it was, this was the easy vote to take out Mercedes. I, I was sad to lose Karen. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I, I agree. I, th I think that uh, even even just in the last podcast, I, I felt like now that she had been called out for being a catfish, I was a little bit worried that like her story kind of played its course. Like mm -hmm. uh, she didn't really have anywhere else to go. Um, and so losing her here, 
kind of makes sense. Chris still has a lot of room to maneuver. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and if they had dragged her along, then it would have been what they said, where she's just kind of like sitting there and none of her interactions likely would have made much of a difference. Um, so in that sense, probably a good thing that she leaves here. Um, and I do think that it's ultimately the correct strategic decision. Um, I think there's value to the idea of having a goat, so to speak, somebody that is always going to be rated low um, in in other games. But in the circle, that's kind of a dangerous person to have. If you're just dragging her along for a while, uh, that's the kind of person that could sneak up on you at the end uh, that people want to like keep around like, oh, well, she's not a threat. So, you know, at final seven, I'm going to a- I'm going to actually you know, maybe put her at number one or Mm -hmm. uh, like, I'm going to turn it around on Shuby, get him out of here before the final so that he don't, he doesn't win. And then if Mercedes is sitting there in the final four, final five, whatever it is, then she's an easy person for people to be like, well, she's not a threat. I'm going to put her number one so that she cancels out other people's number ones, so on and so forth. Uh, So it's actually not as easy as you might think to just kind of drag somebody along. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I uh, thought maybe there was going to be a chance that she was going to end up uh, sticking around, but uh, sad to see uh, Karen slash Mer- Mercedes go. Were you surprised uh, with who she went to go see? No, uh, because uh, I, I, I love trying to figure out these things right before they happen. Uh, mm-hmm. So it Sounds seemed like right. she was a very con- con- uh, conf- a confrontational person, right? So yeah. like my immediate thought was like, okay, go confront Sammy. But then I realized... Oh, but she's a catfish. Like it's hard. It's hard to maintain your like uh, like. No, I'm just because if she goes and she's like, oh, I knew you had it out for me from the get go. Sammy just went. Well, you're, yeah, you're a catfish. I was right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so th- I feel like the catfishes are a lot more likely to go to somebody that they they liked that Mark, will have. Yeah. And that will welcome them with open but arms. I felt like throughout the whole season, Mercedes was like, every time Sammy did something, Mercedes was like, or, or Karen was like, oh, see, that's exactly like the kind of person that I, that like the real Karen would really, that she would really like that. And, and I kind of felt like that she might go see Sammy and I thought they might hit it off. Nah, not the case. You, you mm. gotta, gotta play it safe. Yeah, you don't want uh, it's it, especially like again, like catfishes usually want to justify being a catfish. They want to mm. go out on a good note. They don't want to be like uh, like you got caught. Yeah, like that's that's shameful. You got me. You got me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I love so when uh when Sammy reads out Mercedes, Chris is like, whoa! I did yeah. not see that coming at all yeah like, even though she was called out for being a catfish and was last in the rankings you didn't see yeah. this coming at all yeah oh i think that was a blind spot for chris and I, and I think that maybe this ends up being a good thing for chris because you know uh that she was an anchor for him uh mm-hmm. that he loves her he lo- he loved mercedes uh slash, and he loves karen and she, but everybody else uh was not feeling it so I think that probably that was the kind of thing that were when it was coming up in conversation, he was probably trying to defend her. So now that she's gone, maybe Chris can rebound a little bit. Yes. So Mercedes is going to see Chris before she leaves. Mm-hmm. Um, and she mostly just has words uh, in regards to other players about Sammy and mm-hmm. how she felt like Sammy had it out for her. And she says it was all Sammy. I feel like Shuby was innocent of it, and she he was just taken in by Sammy, uh, which we know was a little bit the reverse. Um, so this also this plays even more into Shuby's hands here uh, that uh, that Mercedes is the one to go because it makes it seem like a grudge uh, that that Sammy had. Um, the Antonio theory: a woman <laughs> uh, a woman went home, and then a woman blames the other woman, yeah. and uh, it wasn't the guy got off scot free. Yeah, she says that uh, she basically implies that Sammy wanted her out because uh, of her looks, which is kind of ironic given the catfish situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Mercedes uh, ended up, uh, you know, the filters was it was a factor. People yeah. were people weren't feeling it, especially the third photo. I don't know what it was about the third photo that everybody uh, really piled on. Well, I, I talked about this with the mom. I, I just felt like 
it was just two quintessential like Instagram model photo. Like, mm -hmm. uh, like, oh, look, you happen to catch me on the sidewalk with an interesting wall as a backdrop. And I'm just kind of like looking down in a, in a, you know, a great fashion outfit uh, mm -hmm. in a modeling pose. Like, um, like that's, I just, you'd see that on every single Instagram person's, I imagine, thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> all the things all, all the things um so uh mercedes also talks about uh being gay and that being mm -hmm. one of the like one of the reasons she came in uh as mercedes um I, I i understood sort of like her message about um how that causes people to judge her in a certain way um but i wasn't entirely sure how that connected with mercedes the picture because uh she was Play, I mean, I guess she was playing somebody that was bi uh, as Mercedes. It was pink and in not, her rainbow, Not Karen. strictly a lesbian. Yeah. Um, so maybe she was more referring to that, or maybe she was talking about just how like it's just easier to accept if you're better looking to be a, a lesbian, that it's harder for her uh, looking the way she is and, and being the age that she is. Um, but, uh, but you know, it's, I think that the, ultimately it's a nice moment. They're bonding over this, uh, and she, she wants Chris to win. Yeah, I think that people probably have a lot of preconceived notions about Karen when they see her. I think she said in the first episode that people see her and think that she's like a, a New York City thug. Mm -hmm. uh, and she certainly, uh, you know, has, uh, you know, she bonded with Chris that uh, even though she didn't talk a lot about God, I think she had like, a, it said something about God on her hat, mm -hmm. uh, which is something also that uh, she shared in common with Chris. So I think there's a lot of different layers to Karen and it was uh you know fun to get to meet Karen uh virtually on the show. Yeah, I I really I I thought she was so much fun. I thought she brought a lot of great energy to the show. Uh, I am a little bit concerned uh about like losing her. I hope that we we have I hope we have somebody to sort of replace that kind of like skeptical uh like sharp energy um because she was really the only person in there that would like kind of be upfront with people on occasion yeah uh, uh she which, told it like it is she was a truth yeah. teller for a catfish uh, right ultimately that was kind of her downfall um i think i think that uh i think her big mistake Ultimately, you know, obviously she was screwed over by the Antonio thing. But I think, again, she kind of brought that on herself to some degree because she kept him at arm's length. Like mm -hmm. he was an ally of hers, but she didn't trust his intentions, which is fair because his intentions were strategic. But she didn't go, OK, I'm going to use this strategically. She was like, eh, I'm going to keep you at arm's length. Um, she even came for him a little bit in the question game and mm -hmm. made people suspicious of him and in some way helped his downfall, which then he wasn't around to help protect her or uh, take a bullet for her, essentially. Um, so I think that uh, just strategically, uh, she kind of fell fell a little short. Yeah, I think she felt like that Antonio was that had that uh, play a life and was, you know, maybe, you know, talking to everybody the same way that he was uh, talking with her. And she was very guarded in terms of, you know, that she wasn't going to tell him exactly uh, everything that she had going on. And so, uh, you know, good work getting Antonio out of the game. But then, yeah, then they came for her. Yeah, and it was really—it's really like the the Shubies and Rebecca's of the world that she needed to be uh, uh, cautious of, because mm -hmm. um, those are the those are the real social butterflies in there to some degree. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so well, can we just say that uh, and then thank you, uh, Karen Mercedes, for at least giving us. Bro, blow it down. Make sure you pull out if you feel a tingle. Don't make no yeah, illegitimate right. babies, bro. <laughs> so she left us with some uh, you know important words of wisdom. Yeah, uh, you know, she didn't she didn't tell Chris that advice. I, I'm I'm worried for him now. Or Joey. <laughs> <laughs> probably probably the one more likely to need that. Uh, very much so. All right. Um, so we get a message from Mercedes the next morning. Yeah, it's the goodbye message. Uh, and she re she's revealed lots of shocked faces. Oh, mm hmm. Yeah. Um, just dramatic, dramatic difference there. Uh, 
and I, I'm still like I, I definitely like seeing the reactions but there was also a moment where after Shubi has Mercedes blocked where he's like I hope I hope she's a, I hope she's a catfish I hope she's a catfish like there's like a sense of relief that they get to feel if they were right or wrong or even just getting mm-hmm. to know whether they were right or wrong whereas in the first season of the UK circle they never got a goodbye message so they never knew if the person they eliminated was a catfish or not and so there's yeah. always a level of uncertainty there um, but did I you like that better? Uh, there's pros and cons to both. I think it works better in some places and it's better this way in some places. So uh, I think ultimately uh, this is probably the safer way to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is safer. I, I do think it would be a little bit more of a mystery of, uh, you know, not knowing whether or not you ended up, uh, you know, uh, killing the person that was in the mafia or not. Right. Uh, and they definitely should not allow the person to say, I met a catfish. So, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, what do you think about uh, uh, the new nickname, uh, Sharky Shabam? Sharky Shabam, it's shark season and we're hunting. <laughs> like doing the shark shark move. <laughs> uh, do, I mean, do shark hunt catfish? Is that the the natural mortal enemy of the catfish? Is the shark? What eats catfish? <laughs> Catfish have a wide variety of predators, including snakes, raccoons, mink, otters, wading birds, alligators, crocodiles, large lizards, humans, and other fish. Yeah, no, not sharks. No sharks. Okay. Should it be otter shabam? <laughs> yeah. Otters are cute. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So <laughs> uh Joey also said Joey is also in shock. He's like, oh no. Oh, what if what if Sammy's a fat truck driver named Tony? Yeah, which is very specific. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so then we get a romper room group chat. Yeah. Well, where 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 do we get romper room from? I don't know. Uh, what's your most adventurous romp? <laughs> I guess maybe that's what it is. Adam wasn't a part uh, of this chat. This, he probably was really disappointed. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is uh, the uh, this girl talk chat. Yeah. Chris, Rebecca, and Sammy. Yeah. Maybe Adam incepted the word "romp" into the uh, circle lexicon somehow. Yeah. Uh, he's gonna spill the tea. They're gonna get the juice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That uh, that uh, Mercedes went to Chris's room. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, and Chris is gonna you know uh, sp- spill spill the tea. Uh mm-hmm. yeah, it was the Kiki of all time, Taryn. Very true. Yes, I, I'd like to think that uh, this is the Kiki of all time. Me and you. I I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what that is? Because I... yeah, no, it's, uh, I, I love to Kiki. Okay. Like me par- too. Like party. Like hang out. Uh, yeah. Maybe maybe uh, you could uh, rebrand the morning update, the morning Kiki. The morning Kiki, yeah. That's yeah. I'm all about it. Let's go. It's it's where you get all the juice. <laughs> the morning Kiki. Message, Taryn, are you ready to morning Kiki? Hello, everyone, and good morning to the Morning Kiki, where we spill all the juice about the Big Brother 21 house. Hold on to your wig. Um, <laughs> all right. Yeah. They then start comparing notes about Adam. What and uh, Sammy is going to let Rebecca know that uh, Adam has been playing the field. And <laughs> I think... I think he uh i think he was a little hurt Rebecca. yeah well that that is not the kind of gentleman that i am used to associating with yeah i'm used to associating with gentlemen that don't show interest in me because it's the first time a gentleman has ever shown interest in me <laughs> you think you have somebody known and they send you a teddy bear and they're gonna be a loyal and wholesome suitor Unbelievable. These are the kinds of boys that my father warned me about. You know, you know, the one thing Adam forgot is that girls talk. (laughs) Right, girls? (laughs) So he's going to go and confront Adam. 
<laughs> Slyly. Uh, yeah. He said if this was him, he'd be like, yo, you know, you did wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, but he says that Rebecca, no, she's going to be... It's going to be the, the coy, sort of shy Rebecca. Um, and so he's like, uh, oh, have, have you talked with Sammy or uh, Miranda or anything mm -hmm. like that? Um, and Adam's like, uh-oh. Yeah, I've got nothing to hide. Well, yeah, I've, I've talked. I've talked with Sammy, but uh, way less than I've talked with you. You know, I'm still your cuddle toy. Cuddly yeah. toy. <laughs> so bad. So, what so is bad. happening? <laughs> It's like, it's like they, it's like they, they can't feel like this is real, right? It's like mm -hmm. flirting has become, because flirting by itself is a sort of way of expressing interest without expressing interest. It's a coy sort of language, but mm -hmm. flirting in the circle has become a sort of way of discussing alliances without discussing alliances it's mm -hmm. become a meta coy language where you flirt with somebody to strategically link up with them even though you know that this flirting is completely ridiculous and fake but you mm -hmm. know that the flirting means that it means that you're interested in strategically connecting and and and, and mm -hmm. rating each other well uh it's just it's 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 all gone mad rob <laughs> yeah uh i really uh, I feel I feel like that Adam like should have uh, like Googled how to uh, talk to people on uh, text message before he came onto the circle. It's, I guess so, but it seems like it doesn't it doesn't really even necessarily matter how well you flirt. The point is that you just make the gesture of here is me flirting, regardless mm -hmm. of how well I'm doing. This just means that I'm going to rate you high and hopefully you rate me high and we'll keep each other safe without actually expressing that sentiment. Well, I think that the idea is to have, you know, uh, you know, normal conversation in a flirty way, as opposed to as Adam has come in <laughs> and like outwardly try to hook up with people with like no build up whatsoever. Like he's basically like texting people in the circle, you up. Hey, how I mean, would you like me to, for me to come over and intercourse you? <laughs> I I see what you're saying, but I feel like that's how most people operate. He's just less good. He's just not as good at it. Like Miranda, her first question coming in was like, so you guys into girls like, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, who's willing to hook up with me? Um, but Miranda's mm -hmm. like uh, uh, slightly better at it, at least, even though she got mm -hmm. misunderstood. But now she's yeah. seemingly doing OK. Whereas, you know, Adam comes in, and he's like, uh, so arouse me um, <laughs> and uh, I'm adventurous or I've been told that I'm adventurous in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. um, so he's just like really exceptionally bad at it, but it mm -hmm. feels like that's just the way that people communicate in this version of the circle. It's very strange, you know, yeah. including we've talked about how people come in and have to pretend that they're single just like because that's yeah. just how people talk. It's it's like they don't have anything else to talk about other than flirt. So that's so, the only indicator. Uh, you know, a couple of sort of meta questions about this. I know that we, we've talked a lot about like, OK, was this uh, like Americans versus uh, people in the UK? But do you feel like that uh, that? Do you feel like that the producers might have like primed the the contestants differently for this season uh, coming into this show? So not necessarily that this is uh, like a cross section of how Americans operate, but do you feel like that maybe they were sort of like primed for this in a different sort of way? I mean, it's it's certainly possible, um, but I, I don't know why they would have done something so. Hey, this is different. on Netflix. This is America. Hey, don't, you know, you want to make sure you know you keep it sexy because you know that's what's going to make people interested in the show. I do think that they really wanted. I I I, I think I can see where you're where you're coming from because I think they. It seems like they really want a fake, super attractive person to get into a relationship with a real person because mm -hmm. they want the moment where somebody who is genuinely interested in Adam, the photo 
to mm-hmm. see a- Alex, the guy, yeah. or Mercedes, the photo, and see Mercedes, the woman. Like mm-hmm. th- it feels like they're really they're really reaching for like really drastic shifts in like looks. Like a lot of the catfish mm-hmm. are about looks, um, as opposed to just like in the UK there are a, lo- a decent amount of uh, catfish that are just like I want to be this personality, or uh, you know I feel like this will help me feel less judged because of this. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of this is like I want to be attractive and flirt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So maybe that's what America the Americans want to see. I maybe they feel like Americans want to see somebody just feel utterly uh, <laughs> humiliated. Humiliated. Yeah, we like that. Yeah, makes sense. Um, Lines up. So uh, Adam even says in the confrontation with Rebecca, "I don't want to be on the wrong side of anyone." <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, Rebecca is now Adam is a dog he's a dog mm-hmm. and he tells Adam every time I look at Sir Bear Bear I'll think of you <laughs> yeah uh, Rebecca feels like that uh, she has Adam uh, right where she wants him but uh, you know does, just doesn't trust him anymore mm-hmm. uh, we also get uh, Joey and Adam and mm-hmm. uh, it seems like there's a lot of sort of uh masculine competition between the two of them adam says he feels like joey's sexier brother (laughs) yeah Uh, i thought that joey would have a little more disdain for adam but he doesn't seem to like outwardly dislike him yeah i think that he's skeptical because he's a weirdo and he (laughs) said things like uh I want you to be my daddy to sammy Um, yeah (laughs) I, I don't know what part of the character that really uh maybe that was Alex through. slipping through. I don't know. <laughs> um but Joey asks Adam about the gym. And Are you like, at okay. the gym too, bro? Here we go. Let's let's go. I'll, if Joey just asks some questions, um, but it does seem like they're uh, they're a little smarter than this. In the UK, there were a lot of investigation uh, conversations mm-hmm. that happened where you know you'd get quizzed about things you talked yeah. about because they wanted to see if you were a catfish. But that's right. not really the greatest thing for you to do socially. Right. Uh, we totally could have ended up in some sort of a poached egg uh, situation of uh, if Joey asked uh, Adam a question like, so tell me, what is your leg day routine? Uh, and Adam would have been like, uh, salt, pepper, uh, just, uh, just put some cheese on it. Yeah. And boom. You know, push-ups and crunches, obviously. Yeah. You know? Like a yeah. hundred of them, <laughs> more, more. So yeah, do do you think that Adam then to you know avoid ending up in some sort of a situation where he gets like a one on one? That's why he brought the other guys into it. It's uh, maybe a little bit. He's, he goes, oh yeah, you just you just caught me finishing jumping rope. That's, mm-hmm. Oh boy. Yeah uh so we we get more guys chat now yeah bring more guys in it's time for the workout challenge it's Mm -hmm. time to do the push-up challenge first one to 50 push-ups let's go Mm -hmm. and then none of them do it except for shuby shuby so earnest it's like okay i guess if everybody's doing it i I guess i might as well also (laughs) yeah joey's sitting there in the gym he's like i'm not doing i'm exhausted yeah Chris uh, is eating chips. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I can't do 50, maybe 30. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and Adam, of course, is just like in the bathtub, like, yeah, screw that. So they're all just not doing it. Uh, I don't, how did they get away with that? Like, if Shuby is the only one doing it, did they try to time out 50 push? It didn't seem like any of them said that they did it was so ridiculous to me that shuby is down there doing 50 Mm push-ups like oh i can't do it he's taking breaks he finally barely manages to get to 50 and he's like all right i hit 50 and adam mr push-up adam is like beat me i didn't even get i got to 45 45. and i stopped (laughs) yeah he's getting (laughs) soft in the circle how did, how does that not come off as extremely sketchy? Mm-hmm. I mean, Joey where, did, what, yeah, what did Joey say? He did walk away from the conversation like, oh, what a stupid person. 
<laughs> Chris says that was the fakest chat I have had. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Chris Very knows. Right. Chris knows that that's not that's not a real thing. Yeah. Um, we then get uh, the emoji challenge part two. Miranda. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I would challenge you to the push-up contest if we weren't on video. Oh well, let's do it right now. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. Ready? Let's. Uh, I'm, I'll just. I'll be down here. <laughs> All right. Forty-nine. Fifty. Oh, fifty. Oof. Yeah. Oh, I think Got I beat it. you. Yeah. Well. Okay. Well, that was Tyron. You should cut out that part of the podcast where we were doing the push-ups for that. That'll be too boring for the listeners. Oh uh, yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll do that. Okay. Just cut that after the after the podcast. Yeah. We'll just. It'll thing. be easy because uh, you know I was off screen so. Mm -hmm. yeah. I I, enjoyed, I did a hundred. That'll be way too long for the podcast. Yeah, you know, I mean, I said fifty to to make you feel better, but it was it was actually five hundred. So five hundred. Yeah, wow. I mean, I gotta, what are you wow. gonna do? I'm, you know, I'm a buff guy. I go to the gym. Yep. I arouse yep. women. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I've been told I'm adventurous. Oh no. In the gym. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, emoji challenge part two. Just took a turn. Just took a turn. Yeah. Uh, Miranda starts a conversation with Joey, who is just freaking out as usual. Yeah, not for anything. And believe me, I I I really appreciated this. But I mean, couldn't Miranda or Sammy just lie and say that? Oh no, I got an emoji from from joey were they worried that the other one was gonna ch oh i heard you sent the emoji to sammy well i think th i think it's a, it's a the point of the game was to have fun with the it. board yeah, yeah. <laughs> um although they do get a limited amount of conversations per day and wasting mm -hmm. one on this i don't know yeah oh well, how many conversations do they get do they, they have like a ration i think well what i was told from uh, some of the uk players is that uh you basically at the start of the day you talk to the producers and you're like here's who i want to talk to mm -hmm. um and uh, i think you gotta like give a reason why you want to talk to them too like it has to be a good enough reason um, do you know also that do they get like a specific grocery list i think yeah i think they i think they can like request food Okay, because sometimes they're, they're like cooking bizarre things uh, that are just like, like it's not like, a, you know, that they just have like a stocked refrigerator of like, here are these ingredients. Like, I feel like they're requesting weird stuff. Wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's get back to the uh, dirty emoji chat. Yeah. So Joey is, is being his usual Joey self. Like, oh. Miranda. <laughs> well, but hold on. That's so uh, that he's uh, interrupted while he's in the process of uh, shaving his entire body. Yes. So what what are you up to? I'm currently shaving my entire body. <laughs> and and what are you wearing? Uh, what did he say? He said I'm naked. You're naked. <laughs> currently naked. Currently in the bathroom. Message, I am naked, shaving my body. Miranda's like, oh, whoa. He's, she's like, I got him. He wants me to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so she's trying to get him to send uh, the, uh, the, the correct emoji. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, the, She wants the eggplant. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and he's not sending any emoji. Just like, you know, Sammy was trying, got yeah. no emojis. No, he's not a big emoji guy. But then, then he had an emoji explosion. Yes, he's uh, he's just like, Matt, wish you were here. Yeah, uh, with me. But she she started it right. That she had like the water dripping. Uh, mm -hmm. That was uh, that she she put that one out there, and then that that set off the emoji explosion. Yes, is it chili pepper emoji? <laughs> yeah, uh, water emoji. Yeah. Uh, eyes emoji. <laughs> right right uh and then uh there was some question about the interpretation of the chili emoji what does that count is that an erotic emoji the hot chili pepper yeah i i mean i am not an emoji expert by any mm -hmm. means but my interpretation of the chili pepper emoji is not that it is just a small version of the eggplant emoji but that it is interpreted as like uh like spicy like hot you know hot hot right right uh that I, I don't think know. miranda knew that I, she was like what is that is, is he saying it's smaller <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that would be... 
<laughs> All right, send Miranda an emoji of eyes, uh, champagne popping, small penis. <laughs> Just want to be accurate and honest. Look, I'm ashamed of it. I am, but I got to be truthful. Yeah. <laughs> so, Pre-aroused pepper. <laughs> uh, so she goes, do you mean chili pepper? Or like, do you mean eggplant? Yeah, like I, I do feel like that this was entrapment here. Yes. Uh, this was, uh, I think that this was, uh, if Sammy had all the information, that this should not count. This was I agree. entrapment. He did not even know that the <laughs> meaning of the eggplant, which which is almost baffling. Uh, <laughs> I don't, how, how is Joey, Joey, how, how has he gotten through his life? He talked about he is a, a person who has sent naked photos but has not gotten that the that that the uh, eggplant is the emoji for a phallus? It How has never, he not gotten this? Never came up, I guess. I, he's just used to using the smaller one. Purple guy. <laughs> he's, uh, he's using the chili. So the yeah. So for uh, <laughs> Joey, that uh, that he has been using the the, the chili. <laughs> the eggplant is so big it doesn't even register that's a guy that's a doesn't, whole guy doesn't register eggplant yeah. the only eggplant i know about is eggplant parmesan <laughs> he goes he so she asks about the eggplant he goes what chili pepper is that yeah purple guy purple purple guy all right purple guy she's like yes purple guy <laughs> yeah so purple guy purple guy it is um, and then, then she goes and brags to Sammy about it. I got an egg. I got two eggplant emojis from him. He didn't even know what they were. Yeah. Boy, I bet when Joey is watching the show back, I bet he's going to be really uh, blown away that <laughs> that's what, like, oh, my God. I had no idea. That's yeah. what she was talking about? Are you kidding me, Shuby? <laughs> Oh man, yeah. I mean, uh, cre credit to Amon who was like, they, she should have just asked him about the emoji. <laughs> she just like said, you know, give me this emoji. He mm -hmm. would have done it. Yeah, uh, that you could get a uh, a cheap win. Uh, in real life, how many uh, purple guy emojis do you think that Joey is receiving today, Taryn? Um, a significant amount. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody that knows. <laughs> I, purple I, guy, I, purple guy, purple guy. I imagine his uh, mentions and DMs are full of purple, purple guy emojis and people asking him about how he got a picture with Lady Gaga and Adele. <laughs> That's what a mom yeah. wanted to know. Yeah. What do you? Th what did he come up with? I, he, he, he just said, uh, "Hey, Joey, reach out to me. Tell me, tell me this. What, mm -hmm. what happened? Amon was freaking out." Mm-hmm. I would have gone with hashtag three legends. Oh, I see. Mm. <laughs> see? That's not, that's nice. thought you were still talking about uh, eggplants. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, if only Joey had a picture with uh, red hot chili peppers. There you go. <laughs> that would have been good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's what we got. We uh, we are going to end the episode as we see that we are going to be adding two new people to the yeah. circle. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, are they coming in as uh, real people? I think we're coming in as uh, catfishes. One, it seemed like that we got a real, uh, almost like the real version of yes. Adam. <laughs> so at first we see like a, a, a man walking and I was mm -hmm. like, a man is being added. That means he must be playing a woman because we just lost a woman. Mm -hmm. um, but then we see that there's also a woman there. So it, he might be playing himself. Um, and so I, I would guess that the man is playing himself and the woman is playing a woman uh or sorry a man the man is playing at least a man um he mm -hmm. might not be playing himself um and he does he looks exactly like adam i was like is this the that is would this be so the real great. adam like, yeah, the real adam is what like, if the real him? adam comes in to play as somebody else and sees mm. his own picture up there yeah that would be incredible now are we gonna go up to nine people taryn it's it seems that way yeah 
Okay. So is we that may, a first? Does that we, happen in the UK? It has happened. Uh, okay. We may see like a double blocking happen soon. Um, in fact, I'm sure we will because uh, there are only six episodes total remaining. So mm -hmm. um, unless this is the uh, these might be the last people to be added uh, again. The UK version is a little bit longer. So um, who knows? But I would imagine we're going to get a double blocking at some point. Okay. All right. Uh, it would be interesting. It's just, uh cliffhanger yeah two new people and that that also means that um the ratio of original players to new players will be five original players to four new players um mm -hmm. now granted they can't all rate at, at at first so it'll still be the original seven where the original players have an advantage still um but if they get rid of another original player instead of a new player then the, they will be tied uh, four to four is the move to knock out the original players because then they have that over the new players pretty much i mean the move is to get in with whoever you can get in with mm -hmm. if the original players are too tight to get in with then you need to somehow break them up get them out whatever uh, if you can get in with them then that's that's great um mm -hmm. but you know i've we've seen it where the original players stick together and they're basically mm -hmm. unbreakable untouchable we've seen it where uh you know there's there are cracks in the original players and the new players can kind of come in and pick a side uh and so that can that can work out for you as well it really just depends on who you're in there with okay but I, for the original players sticking together yeah. is a good move yeah uh so that's what we have for episode six of the circle yeah. Okay. Can't wait to find out who the new players are. Yeah. Very exciting. Do you think um, that we will have another elimination before we get to the end of this week's episodes? I would imagine. I don't think we're going to go into the final four episodes with nine players left. I feel like okay. we'll get at least one more elimination. Probably. I think so. Okay. All right. We're I, hopefully up. they don't leave us on a cliffhanger with a week to wait. That would be annoying. I feel like we'll I feel like we'll get an elimination. Yeah, I, I think that uh coming into at the end of last week we got the arrival of Adam. That was the cliffhanger going into that episode. Mm -hmm. So I thought they'll leave us on some some note. I mean it's so far it's been every other episode, right? With the first episode we lost someone, then it was one, four, and six. One, four, okay. So it's been yeah, uh, not super consistent, but mm -hmm. I feel like it wouldn't be crazy to have another one at eight. Okay. Especially with nine people left. All right, um, we'll see. How are you liking, by the way, the, the format of introducing new players as we go? It's really fun. I, I'm enjoying everything about the uh, the circle. I feel like it's, uh, you know, exactly the speed that I'm looking for in terms of, like, it's not it's not the genius. You know, mm -hmm. I, I can, you know, uh, like, multitask and then also, uh, you know, know everything that's going on. And uh, it's fantastic so far. Yeah, I agree. I think that like for a show like Big Brother or Survivor, it would be terrible. But mm -hmm. this is like the game of this is a lot more lighthearted, a lot more like loose. And so adding people as we go, not that big of a deal. And I think it really helps in the sense that we really get to know each and every person. We get yeah. a good amount of content from each and every person because there's never more than eight or nine people at once. It even on the eliminations, like there's never anybody that's like, oh, I don't care about this person. You know, yeah. I, you know, I, everybody there's there's stakes in every elimination because I feel yeah. like that we've really gotten to spend time with every single one of these characters. I agree. All right. That's what we have for you. I will be back very soon to talk about episode seven of The Circle. And then tomorrow night, we will be back to talk about episode eight, mm -hmm. cover all four of this batch of The Circle episodes on the round table should be fun yeah really looking forward to it we had so much fun uh last week i got uh so many nice messages from people that really loved hearing from tim uh i thought that the the round table was uh so much fun so uh that was uh really great last thursday we'll do it again uh this thursday as well awesome uh what else do we have coming up rob uh, well, we got into talking about Survivor preseason uh, this week. Uh, we had our first Survivor preseason roundtable talking about Sandra and Rob and Amber. And then, Taryn, we have a second one coming up on a Wednesday night uh, talking about 
Ethan and Danny and Yule and Sophie. Yes. And uh, I'll be there. Yeah, I'll be excited to hear what you and Mike Bloom and Liana have to say on uh, Wednesday night. Yes, which is probably tonight. Yeah, which is in, I, I think it's actually in like three and a half hours. Yeah. So we're closing it. <laughs> closing in. Closing in. Very, very soon. Very we're going to get one more Busy circle day. podcast in. Busy day. Then Survivor. Should yeah. be a lot of fun. I'm very excited to talk about uh, those. I mean, it's really not, it's it's hard to pick up a, a bad batch of winners uh, for Survivor, but uh should be an interesting conversation. Yeah. And who knows? Maybe one day we'll talk about uh, circle winners. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And then somebody will actually not be a winner, but they'll be catfishing as one of them. Mm, yeah. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. You can find uh, Rob on Twitter at Rob Session. You can find me at Armstrong Taren. We'll see you next time.